Hello everyone and welcome back to a Dragon Age. Um I just want to thank you guys for waiting so patiently. Um I had um my birthday and afterwards got a little sick. Um I'm doing good now. A little fatigued, but <clears throat> not too bad to a point where you know I'm going to be a really, you know, I don't know even how to say it. I'm still a little bit uh, tired, but um, I'm gonna start trying to, you know, record more here in between everything. I just started back to work again, so. Um, but anyway, let's get going on this. Um, we are in Red Cliff and we're gonna go talk to um, Dwayne. Hello? No one answers your call. Knock on door. There's no response. Alright, well, let's lockpick it. You defy it. You definitely pick the lock on the door. Alright, here we go. Here we go. There we go. Wonderful. Intruders. I hope you have a good reason for breaking and entering into my home. <sighs> Let's try to be sweet. Um, I apologize. I didn't mean any harm. Apology accepted. The name's Dwin. Pleased to meet you. Now get out. No. Uh, Murloc, uh, says that he needs you for the mill. So what? You recruiting for him? I'll tell you what I told Murdoch. I'm not risking my neck for this town. Uh, can't I change your mind? Maybe. Let's hear what you've got. I'll put a, in a good word for you with the Van Tegan or the Owl. Hmm. You might just be able to pull that off. Fine. I'll throw in with the militia. For now. <coughs> You better be out there too when the sun goes down. I'm not fighting for a lost cause, you hear me? Alright, little tip here. Always make sure before you come to Red Cliff that your persuasion is at three. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, it's not that easy to do. I shall do it. And um, you end up sometimes with giving gold or stuff for if you really want to offering yourself to them which is yeah gross oh I've been playing too much folder gates here all right now we're off to get Belvin I'm just gonna go straight in hello is someone there go away this isn't your home young man come out this instant I yes ma'am good job Wynn All right, I came out. You won't hurt me, will you? I'll go back to the Chantry if you really want. Um, let's see, which one do I want to go? Is this your house? Yes, it was my mother's house. She's dead now. And Caitlin said we have to move away if we survive. So what were you doing in there? I... I can't tell you. It's a secret. Um, are you sure? Maybe I could help you. You could. Alright, I guess. I just... Father said I could have his sword when I grew up. It was Grandfather's. And Grandfather was a great dragon slayer. I thought, if I was brave like Grandfather, I could use his sword and kill the bad people who took Mother. So where is this sword now? In the chest. In Mother's room. Father gave me a key, but I'm not supposed to give it to anyone. Um, let's see. Perhaps I can help you and your sister in return. You could? Maybe you could... Give my sister money? She said if we had money, we'd be alright. 
even if mother is dead. I'll talk to your sister about it, I promise. Oh, all right. Here's the key. I hope you use it to kill a lot of those bad people. I should go back to the Chantry. Good luck. All right. Okay, and then um, same with Dwayne and the boy. Um, it's a lot easier if you got that persuasion up. Oh, there's the key. Let's turn around here. And get that. Very well. Okay. The Legends of Callahan, Chapter 1. I believe we did like Chapter 2 outside. Um, prior to crowning of King Callahan, Ferelden was little more than a collective of independent Arlings and Tyrns that warned on each other constantly over petty manners. Callahan was born in 510, exalted, exalted, as the third son of High Ever, merchant on a hard times. He was eventually sent to a distant cousin, a poor young knight named Sir Foran, who made Callahan his squire and dog Hallander. Uh, Hallander. As the tales go, Sir Foran and his Squar became caught up in one of those wars of unity at the time. Ow, and my cat just put her claws at me. <laughs> oh, sweet. Okay. Uh, Arl Marinen was a strong but general disliked man who was making a bid for kingship. Ferran's own lord, a young fool of an Arl named Tanor, no older than Callahan, was besieged by Mirren's forces at his castle, today known as the West Hills. When Mirren called Tanner out par to parley, the young Arl asked for a volunteer from among the squires, someone who could masquerade as a Tanner in a parley party. Callahan kneeled before Tanner and asked for the honor. Much to Tenor's and Sir Ferenc's dismay, Callahan immediately identified himself to the Arl Marin. When he asked by the Arl why he was the here, Callahan explained that he had been asked to take the place of his lord. The Arl said that he had planned to kill Tenor. Was Callahan willing to die in his lord's place as well? Callahan impressed Marin and his allies by saying that he was. Martin offered Callahan a place as his own squire, but Callahan refused, stating that if Mandarin had a plan on betraying the right of parley, he was no man of honor. Mandarin's allies laughed at that, and Marin himself conceded that Callahan had a point. He allowed Callahan to return to the castle safely and launch his final assault. During the assault, both Tenor and Ferran were killed, but Callahan found himself in one-on-one -on -one combat with Arl Mandarin. In front of all of Mandarin's allies, Callahan defeated the Arl and commanded his call off his army. The Arl asked Callahan who he professed, professed to serve now, if both his knights and his lord were dead. To which Callahan replied that he would do as his honor bade him to, for he had nothing else. You are not a man known for your honor, Callahan said, but I believe you wish to be. You allowed me to live once, and so now I'll do the same for you. Perhaps if more people lived by honor, we would learn to trust each other long enough to live together. And with that, Callahan withdrew his sword. I am humbled by your words, Arl Mandarin told Callahan, dropping to one knee. To his allies, he shouted that he now knew he would never be king, but he knew who should be. With that, Mandarin pledged his allegiance to Callahan, who named him, who he named Tarn and ruler of Tarn's land. From the Legends of Callahan by Brother 
Haren, chant through scribe, 810, blessed. All right. Up we go. And unlock that chest. Got the blade. And another codex. Contrary tales for the adventurous. It was then that he realized he wasn't alone. The abandoned camp in front of him was unbelievably welcoming like a mirage. The fire felt like a warm hand grabbing his heart. It rema reminded him of a previous life so long ago when he was happy, running on sunflower fields with his boy. The sun on his face lay next to the fireplace with his beautiful wife in his arms. He felt a sharp pain in his heart. His thoughts shifted to that fateful day when everything changed. Blood was everywhere. He held the body of the dead wife in his arms. Around him, the ashes of his burnt house fell like snow. The stench was terrible. It smelled like dark spawn. He grabbed his axe, touched the icy cold hands of his boy, and left. He would kill them. He would kill them all. The pain in his heart was unbearable. He opened his eyes and saw the second most terrifying thing that he would see in his life. A shadowy wrath leaning over him, leeching his life away. Around him the camp was gone, replaced by something familiar, almost peaceful. Bones, death, and despair. He wondered if all his life has been an illusion if he ever had a family. For a brief moment, he felt relief. You can't lose something you never had. But being this close to death brought clarity. He knew it was real. Everything else was the illusion. You could see a smile on his torn face. He had been waiting for this moment for a long, long time. He lifted his weak arms, grasped the demon in the face, and kissed it. It felt like kissing a cloud made of sand and dust. Suddenly, all sorrow left him, and with that, the last bit of his life he had. Before his limp body hit the ground, it was all over. He was finally free. From Cautionary Tale from the Adventurous by Brother Ramus of Grand 794 Storm. Out we go. All right, here. Oh, up we go. Hi, right, puppy. Do you see anything interesting? Okay. That's cute. Pets first. <laughs> Do you see anything interesting? Oh, you didn't find anything, bud. Okay. As you say, I do it say. shall be done. Take. All right, Owen. Or Owen, let's do this. Go away. Curse you. Leave me in peace. You've already taken everything out of my stores. There's nothing left. I haven't taken anything at all. You're mistaken. Hey, you're not Murdoch. Who are you and what are you doing at my door? Let's persuade. I prefer to. Sp I prefer not to speak through a door. Can I come in? Hmm. All right, all right. Let me undo the lock. 
All I ask is that you don't make any trouble. Oh no, I won't. Make his breath. <laughs> what is that smell? It's like someone set a brewery on fire. Somebody's been drinking. So I let you in. You wanted to talk. Now we're talking. Mind telling me who you are? Um, my name is Alara, a Grey Warden helping Van Tegan. A Grey Warden, is it? <laughs> it takes all kinds. Anyhow, my name's Owen, though you might already know that. Care to join me as I get besotted? Or is there something in particular you wanted? Well, let's see here. First, let's see why you locked yourself in the smithy. My girl, Valena, is one of the Alessa's maids and she's trapped up there in the castle but the mayor won't send anyone for her. She's been my life since my wife passed on two years ago. Now she's dead, or soon to be. I don't care what happens to me or the village or anyone. Um, so you intend to drink yourself to death? Why not? It's not like we're going to live past the night anyhow. Or are you going to save us? Oh yes, I am. Is that so? Hmm. Maybe it's the drink talking, but you almost sound like you believe that. It'd do me the world of good to think maybe someone like you could go in and find her. Provided any of us live through the night. <laughs> All right, I'll do my best. Not good enough. Murdoch said the same damn thing, and I didn't believe him either. I want to promise. Promise me that you'll look for her. That you'll bring her back to me if you can. Oh, excuse me, guys. Uh, um, I promise you, I will find her. We will do our best. Please believe us, friend. I'll accept that. It's something to hope for, at least. And I suppose there's no point in me sitting around, is there? Time to relight the forge and get the smithy going, eh? Murdoch will be pleased. If you need anything done, well, just let me know. I've got a lot to do now, so you'll have to excuse me. Excuse me again, goodness. Right, let's go get this first. Uh, I see you found my hiding place. I stuck some old equipment in there before Murdoch could get his hands on it. <laughs> I don't say. think there's anything you'll need in there. But it's hard to say. I was in a bit of a rush when I filled it up. Um, it's locked. Yeah. Let me open it for you. I have the key. Okay. Otherwise, you know, I'll lockpick it for you. <laughs> this is just easy. Very well. Alright, Owen. Let's see what you got for sale. I must admit, it feels good to be up and doing something finally. There's no way I'm sobering up before morning, however. Oh, goodness. I keep yawning. I apologize, guys. Nice to see you have some purpose. I've you to thank for that, stranger. Just do what you've promised, and it will have been worthwhile. Um, let's talk business. Right. I haven't got much, obviously, but I'll do whatever I can for you. Alright. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Uh, I plan on giving some people some... Uh, money. Nothing there. And you won't take those. Okay. It is begun. Up and down. Up we go. We'll take one of those. And
We'll take that. And we'll take that. Back down again. Another doomed soul come to drown their sorrows here, I see. If you came here for a drink, you'll have to talk to Lloyd. He's got a vice grip on the spigots. I'm just here to keep the boys from mutiny. What do you know about the elf in the corner? Not much. He's very quiet. Says his name's Beric and he's here to meet his brother, but I think he's lying. He's a bit... creepy. Alright, uh... So how's business been? What business? Without the castle soldiers, the only customers we have are local. And they're all in the militia with no money to spend. The few with any money are here, but it's not enough to justify working. Lloyd's a... greasy pig. And if I didn't need this job so badly, I... You don't care for Lloyd, I take it? He gropes me and pays me next to nothing. But I suppose it could be worse. Not like I've got many options. I could talk to Lloyd about this. No, no. That'll just make things worse. And that's very sweet, but I'll be fine. Why don't you leave? And go where? With no money and no prospects, I just end up somewhere else working for someone worse. You can leave if you had some help. You mean after the fighting's over? I'd really like that. What would I have to do in return? Mm, nothing at all. I'd be glad to help. That's very kind of you. I... I don't know what to say. Uh, shouldn't you be in the Chantry? Later on, yes. Lloyd will lock himself in the cellar, and I'll go to the Chantry. Are you... fighting tonight? Yes, I am. That's... good to hear. I didn't know that. Um, I should go. Keep safe. Alright. Bear wick or whatever. Not looking for company. I don't care if you are or not. I hear you're Beric. What? How did you know that? Uh, well, that's my name. Why? Um, you said you were waiting for your brother. My what? My oh, what? <laughs> yes. He was supposed to meet me here. And then I got stuck here when monsters from the castle attacked. You're a terrible liar. And you didn't try to leave? Uh, no. Those who tried are dead. And, um, I, uh, have to wait for my brother. Look, you're very pretty and all, but I was told to, uh, just leave me alone. What do you mean? What were you told to do? Nothing! Nobody told me to do anything. Just because you're a Grey Warden doesn't mean you can go around threatening people. I'm not gonna threaten you, I'm gonna persuade you. This will be easier if you just tell me what you're hiding. If I... but I never... Oh, all right, I'll tell you. Just... just don't hurt me. This is more than I bargained for. Mm -hmm. Look, they just paid me to watch the castle and send word if anything should change. But they never said anything about monsters. I haven't even been able to report anything since this started. <sighs> I'm stuck. Guys. Same as you, I swear. Um... who are they? Who hired you? A tall fellow. I forget his name. He, uh, said he was working for Hal. Arl Rendon Hal. He's an important man. Terran Loghain's right hand. So I didn't do anything wrong. Aww, what were you supposed to watch the castle for? Just to report any changes. Honest. All I could send word about was the Arl getting sick. After that, monsters started coming from the castle. So, do you know how this happened? Tell me now. I don't know anything about these creatures. When the Arl got sick, I got scared that people would think I was involved. But I swear I don't know anything about it. They sent me to watch. Maybe they knew the Arl would get sick. I don't know. Uh, how do I know you're telling the truth? Here. This is a letter from them. It has instructions and everything. Keep it. Do whatever you want with it. I just thought I was serving the king and making a bit of coin on the side. You have to believe me. Mm, yeah, 
Let's have him help defend Redcliffe tonight. Oh, all right. I'll do it. Thank you for your mercy. I won't forget it. You're welcome. Don't forget it while you're in the battle. Be good. Update. Beric's letter. Beric, we need your eyes and ears in Redcliffe. Stay in the village, keep your head down, and watch the castle. Report any changes and you'll be well paid. A letter in Beric's procession. Ooh. Well, thank you for that, Bella. I'll move me around there. And a letter. Alright, so. Quick spoil alert if you're watching this and you haven't played Dragon Age Origins, but I believe most of you have. Um, you can use this later um, in the lands me when you get there. I don't think I ever use it, but um, I think maybe I used it a, a few times, but that's about it. But that is up to each player. Um, and your discretion on how you want to do it. Uh, graffiti in the Redcliffe's Tavern. Don't eat the cheese. Scratch into the bar of Redcliffe's Tavern. Um, if Lloyd's the owner, yeah, I wouldn't eat the cheese either. I can't believe Lloyd won't even give us some free ale. A time like this, and all he thinks about is turning a profit. Did you expect any different? That bastard's always been cheaper than an antique from the hall. <laughs> Here we are defending the village, and he don't even have the decency to help us out. Uh... Better you should get drunk during the upcoming battle. I was drunk for the last two fights, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Hmm. If you fought those things, I'm you going know. To. Lloyd is charging us for coin we don't even got anymore. Nobody's working right now. We're all just trying to survive. Boy, ah, him. what difference does it make? He won't care. Oh, we, he's gonna be made to care. Alright. Alright, you greasy pig, as Bella says. Let's talk. Hello there, friend. Can't say we've ever met before. Stranger to the village, I take it. Haven't had many travelers lately. All this nonsense is bad for business. Bet you regret coming, yes? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, you know, evil creatures, impending doom, civil war, and the Earl's dead in the castle. Makes you thirsty, don't it? Can't so, it doesn't. what'll it be? You are here to drink, I hope. Who are you, anyway? Name's Lloyd. So, why'd you come to the village now? The roads can't be all that safe, not with a war brewing. Mm, I'm a Grey Warden. Well, that explains it. Except for the lack of darkspawn around here. But never mind me. Something else I can get for you? Mm. Are you charging the militia for ale? Why shouldn't I? They may not have much coin, but I'm not giving it away for free. Uh, think of the goodwill that you'll earn. Why? I never thought of that. Hmm. Maybe I could try it for a bit. Right then, you men over there. Drinks are on the house. All militia drink for free. Oh, you're a saint, Lloyd. Ha ha! If them creatures don't kill me, I swear they'll bleed me dry. Something else I can get for you? Um, let's see what you have. Right. I've got some supplies, too, in case you're interested. With the store closed down, it doesn't hurt to pick up some of the slack, eh? You're impossible. I want that. I suppose. Let me take all these from you, too. Will you take those? Thank you. Okay, so I have a mod. Um, if I want to take Lloyd into battle with me, and in that mod, he stays alive. I normally don't take Lloyd. He's useless, doesn't do a lot of damage, and he's just always in the way. But 
This mod helps him survive and you can get a ring from him at the end of the day. Um, it's not a bad ring. There's other ones out here that are way better than what he provides you. But um, if you don't have that mod in there, more than likely he dies. I shall and do then it. it's just a waste of space is basically what he is. And he gets in the way, like I said. Um, all right, let's do this mission. Yes, what can I do for you? I have a letter for you from the Black Stone Irregulars. I knew this time would come. I should have listened to my wife. Don't sign that paper, she said. They might pay you a few sovereigns now, but they'll be back. Blast. We're back. I'll see you on the front lines, I suppose. Oh, yeah. All right. Now we delivered that letter. Let's go ahead here. Bookshop. It shall be done. Ballad of... Elijah? Alashay. Alashay. The wind that stirs the shallow graves carry from their sawn across the sand. Heed our words, hear our cries, the gray are sworn, in peace we lie. Heed our words, hear our cry, our names recall what we cannot die. When the darkness comes and swallows the light, heed our words and we shall rise. From the ballad of Alay said to his been written after the Battle of Alea, um, which ended the fourth blight, 520XL. Okay. Out she go. Loading. Let's save you. Oh, no, turn. Um, what's this? It's a sock. <laughs> it's a, it's sock. a filthy sock. How oh did it find its way to my bedroll? Maybe it likes you. Socks are sneaky like that. Anyway, it's not mine. It has your name stitched on it. Oh, <laughs> uh, part of Templar training back at the Chantry. The men were uh, always getting their socks mixed up. Anyway, um, sorry about that. I'll take it from you right now. One of my socks is feeling a little damp anyway. A change would be nice. You're going to put it on? It's filthy. And dry. We're not exactly traveling in the lap of luxury here. What hideous habits you've picked up. <laughs> Aww. No word from the castle? No. All is still, as it has been for days. And it is an unnatural stillness, as though there is naught in there but death. Say no more. The R lives, and I will not listen to your inauspicious chatter. Okay. Pick that up. Take. And dog. If you would, be so polite to relieve yourself on this tree. Okay. Ah, oh, sort of like coming home again. But with more undead. Isn't it beautiful? Standing here, you wouldn't know of the trouble down in the village. Ooh, the windmill. I once took a ride on the sails of a windmill. Didn't turn out well. Uh, suppose not. You were a rebellious child, weren't you there, Liliana? Greetings, Grey Warden. I am as relieved as Bantigan is to see you here. I must admit I do not know quite how to address you. Is my lady sufficient? Uh, my lady would be proper. I'm a ten's daughter. Very well then, my lady. I am humbly at your service. I am Sir Perth, until recently in direct service of Arl Eamon of Redcliffe. For now my charge is defending the village from these evil assaults. Would that I had chosen not to seek out the urn of sacred ashes, Perhaps I would have fended off whatever evil befell the castle, or perhaps I would be dead. Ah, oh, well, with the Grey Warden aiding our defense, perhaps all is not lost. Give me one moment. Uh, I have to go answer a door quick here. All right, we're back. Um, so let's see. Where 
perhaps not it's all lost. Um, have you considered using the oil in the village store? No one told me of this. Oil, you say? How much exactly? Um, enough to set many monsters aflame. Assuming that would hurt them. Yes, I see what you have in mind. That might be effective, if used carefully. Yes, excellent idea. I'll send some men to collect the oil. We'll use it to slow these creatures down. Have you anything else to ask me in the meantime? Um, let's see, is there anything I can do to help? We have sufficient armor and weapons, but my knights are too few to stand against the monsters without assistance. Perhaps you could approach Mother Hannah in the Chantry for some holy protection against these evil creatures. Otherwise, I do not know what else you could provide beyond your own talents. We're as prepared for the onslaught as we could possibly be, all things considered. Um, is there anything else you need? No, nothing comes to mind. If you have not spoken to the mayor, Murdoch, you should. His militia is far more in need of aid than we are. I have questions for you. Ask me whatever you wish. Um, let's see. Tell me what happened here. You know about as much as I do. I returned a day before the attacks began, having heard strange rumors about the abandoned castle. I was the only knight to survive the first attack. Since then, I found others returning from the Arlesa's quest. Until we get to the source of this evil, though, I do not think it will stop. And I don't believe we will be enough. Tell me about the quest of Sacred Urn. When the Isle fell sick, we were at the loss. Nothing worked to cure him, and he just kept getting worse. Finally, our lesser Isold came up with a plan. The Urn of Sacred Ashes is a legendary artifact said to hold great healing powers. If found, it might save him. According to the legend, the followers of Andraste brought her ashes back to Ferelden to hide them from the Imperium. We knights volunteer to seek it out. Few of us have returned. Many are still out there, unaware of what is happening here. Just what was the Arl sick with? We were never certain. He thirsted for water and then grew weaker and weaker. He brought in a mage, but even that did nothing. The Arlesa believed he was cursed and that we needed the power of Andraste herself or he would surely perish. Why did the Arlesa believe anyone could find the urn? The Al once employed a scholar, Brother Genetivi. He had proof the urn was in Ferelden, or so I was told. Can no one find the other knights and bring them back? Eventually, perhaps. The ones I have here were those near enough to recall within the last few days. I only returned myself because I was passing by Redcliffe and heard the news of strange attacks. So the knights left the castle defenseless? Not at all. A great number of soldiers remained in Castle Redcliffe. I wonder if they perished there and were transformed into these things. The thought chills my blood. Uh, carry on then. As you wish, my lady. Make her watch over you. Codex updated. Aressa is sold. For the one who delivers the sacred ashes are of Our Lady will have the esteem of Redcliffe and all the riches it, that it is in my power to grant. The Arl of Redcliffe was a source of constant trouble for the em Empire Revel during the occupation. It was rumored that since each new report sent the Empire into a fit of rage, his court had taken to poisoning messengers before they could deliver their accounts. Isol's family was the tenth to give be to be given the difficult task of governing Redcliffe, and since most of the previous Arles had either been murdered by their bands or beheaded by the Empire, they did not approach the job with a great deal of enthusiasm. It so met Eamon, not realizing he was the rightful heir to her father's domain, and quickly became smitten with him for being a part of the resistance never mind that her family he was resisting perhaps a bit too romantic for her own good she insisted upon staying behind with Eamon when the rest of her family was driven out all right let's save here all right we're going back down
Stop fidgeting. I don't like being out here, Dwin. The mayor's giving me the evil eye. And well, he should. Because you're a good-for-nothing liar and a thief. Well, we don't understand why we're out here. We're out here because I say we're gonna help these people. And since I pay your wages, you're gonna do as I say. Oh, sure, boss. Whatever you say. <laughs> I hear you got the tavern serving the militia free ale now. While I don't favor my men being drunk come sundown, I suppose it helps morale to have their minds taken off. What's to come? Not well. You have my thanks. Well, it looks like Owen's finally doing the repairs we need. You're welcome. The damn fool is falling over a drunk and still manages to make smithying look easy. Good enough, I say. I'll inform Bantig and the militia is ready to fight. We'll give those bastards a welcome they won't soon forget. Mm. I'd like to talk about Wayne. Thanks for persuading him to come out here. He's going to be a great help. I just know it. Uh, I'll be back. I need to check on something. I have a good feeling about tonight. Alright, updated quest. And we're good. Now we all, all we have to do is it go is begun. out here, or in here. And get uh, Sir Perth's done. But first, we're gonna talk to Caitlin here. Bevan said you were the one who found him. I can't possibly repay you. I'm um, just say safe, both of you. The Maker sent you. I just know it. Thank you again. All right, and then we'll be talking to them later here. But first. A battle and then we'll come back you are a stranger amongst us yet you still agree to defend our village in its darkest hour we are most grateful to you um i cannot stand by why monsters attack the helpless not many in these modern days would honestly say the same you are a woman of worth and the maker will smile upon you allow me to we'll introduce see. myself i am revered mother hannah head of this chantry which for the moment is a place of refuge for these poor villagers. Surely this cannot be the entire village. These few are all who are left. All those who cannot defend themselves, yes. They are terrified of tonight's attack, and I fear these walls will not keep them safe. What can I do to help with your task? Um, just how safe is the Chantry? It is the sturdiest building in the village. The women, elderly, and children will stay here during the battle, while the militia and knights protect them. They set up a barricade outside the Chantry to keep monsters from getting inside. If anything gets in, Ban Tegan is our only defense. Please, have mercy. Help these people. Do whatever you can. Uh, Sir Perth needs holy protection for the knights. I have done all I can for them. I pray for them each night and seek the Maker's forgiveness for their sins before they face their deaths. What Sir Perth seeks is something that is not in my power to give. Uh, what do you mean? Sir Perth believes that I can protect them against these creatures, a shield only the Maker can provide, and that I withhold this power. Does he not realize that it is his faith alone which must sustain him? It is faith alone which will bring the Maker's aid. Unfortunately, he seeks the Maker's protection in a far too literal sense. This is something I cannot promise nor provide. Well, can't you just tell him the Maker will watch over him? Morale is a powerful thing, you know. You mean you want me to let them think the Maker protects them in a real sense? I will not lie to them like that. Mm, I suppose you're right. Indeed. I know Sir Perth means well, but I will not lie to him about something so important. I should go. May the Maker watch over you, child. Alright, quest updated. Out we go. It shall be done. I don't run through your shooting here, people. I think 
the tower is ever going to get back to what it was, Wynne? I don't know. A great number of people died. It will be difficult to imagine rebuilding, with that cloud hanging over everything for many years to come. Do you think you'll be there? To help rebuild, I mean, once this is all over with? I cannot say. Even if I survive this blight, I am a very old woman, Alistair. Why? Because of some grey hair? You are a formidable woman, Wynn. You could see that it happens. I think you overestimate the number of years I have left. But perhaps you are right. Or perhaps the memories of what happened there will be too strong for me to face. I have a hard time believing that. Well, it's good to have someone that believes in me, so... Now, if I could only feel the same way myself, that would be something. Okay. Alright guys, so this is where we're going to end this episode and um, in the next episode is when we'll go ahead and try to help uh, Redcliffe defend the village. And until then, we'll see you guys next time. Bye now.